evening, everyone, and welcome to Commit to Get Fit with Laura Dion Jones. I am Laura Dion Jones, and I am a pro health activist, certified corporate wellness coach, certified wellness coach, motivational lifestyle writer, and speaker. I lost 130 pounds. There's me in uh, February of 02 at 317 pounds, and I lost uh, 130 pounds in two and a half years, and I'm keeping it off now into my ninth year. And I am here to show you that if I can do it, you can do it too. For more background info uh, on me and my guest, guests, my, um, my motivational weight loss programs, testimonials, etc., please go to commit-fit.com. You see my website right on your screen. And also let me remind you that our show is interactive call-in and the number is on the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. So if you've got a question or something interesting to say, we really do want to hear from you. Now, I'd like to introduce you to today's guest, Kathy Regani, who is going to tell us all um, how to move to improve our health. Uh, Kathy is a Reiki master teacher, cranial sacral therapist, and a Young Living essential oil distributor. Kathy will tell us about movement wellness and why it's so important for us as we commit to get fit. Kathy says movement is more important on our journey to weight loss and wellness than we realize, and it is often overlooked as a major source of concern. I say, just like fruit, when you sit in one spot, you rot. Kathy specializes in helping individuals learn about their own energy system with the intention of feeling balanced on a daily basis. She is a teacher, a coach, and a guide on how to tap into your own energy and understanding your own energy pathways. Every individual has their own unique need for energy and complementary solutions to provide for a balanced life. So please, let's give a warm welcome to Kathy Regani. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me, Laura. Are you kidding me? Have Thank fun. you so, so much for coming in. Listen, um, <clears throat> tell us why this life balance thing in, uh, includes movement. Like, why is movement so, so important? important? Why are you so... Uh, Passionate, passionate. About it? I couldn't think of the word. All I could think of was rabid. Well, and I'm you, thinking rabid is not the word. Passionate. <laughs> passionate. Why are you passionate so passionate? So much better. That's the word we want. Um, yeah. If you think about movement and how we feel when we move, it's just so much better. When you sit, you get stagnant, right? Oh God, yes. Right. So if you think about your own self, Laura, when you don't move, how do you feel? Not well. Not well. Not good at all. Right. And so what happens when you start moving? I always feel better. You always feel better. So just having that movement just really brings um, brings your mind more clear, it, and it makes your your uh, body move better. Um, if you think about it, for the first I don't know million years or so, when humans used six to million. have to six million, a long long time ago, um, you had to move. You had to move, and you had to move quickly. Otherwise, you didn't survive, right? No, you got eaten. <laughs> so what's what do we do now? We sit in front of our computers on TV. Sit in and a car. We don't, we sit in a car, and we don't move like we used to move. So really, movement is so important, especially if you're trying to lose weight. You know, commit to get fit, lose those pounds. If you're not willing to move to burn some of those calories and just make your body function well, it's really hard to get well. It is, and you know something? There is no true and everlasting weight loss without combining a daily cardio program with a good effective diet. You all know that I'm very uh, pro low carb because that's how I lost my weight. That's how I keep it off. And um, that a good effective diet that works for you, whether it be Weight Watchers or low carb or whatever works for you that's healthy that you can live with mm -hmm. forever as your lifestyle eating plan, combined with daily cardio. Now I do a minimum of an hour of cardio a day, mm -hmm. as you know, she, mm -hmm. we've discussed this. Um, I started out you know, walking one hour a day, I got up to five to eight miles a day, and um, Kathy was asking me, how do I feel when I don't do my cardio for one day or two days or three days? Sometimes for one day if I have a meeting or some kind of an appointment, and I can't get it in any, at any time is one thing. But come the second day, believe me, 
I'm getting there at 6.30 in the morning. I'm going there at 8 o'clock at night. And then she said, well, how do you feel when you um, don't exercise for three days in a row? And that would have to be uh, something catastrophic for me to not do some kind of movement, some kind of exercise. Right. It's like I just can't take it. And especially right. if I just only have time to squeeze in 30 minutes instead of the 60, I'll do the 30. But the next day when I do the 60, I will go at it much harder. Mm -hmm. And you do a lot of cardio. You go to the club. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to join a health club. You're in Chicago. There's the lakefront. It's summertime now, so even just going for a walk in the neighborhoods or... They have the rental bikes out there now. There's lots of different ways to get out there and move, especially with the weather being so nice. There's re It's really easy to do, even just going for a walk to your door, going to the grocery store. Um, Kathy also asked me when I was injured, when <clears throat> I had my uh, knee operations, um, she said that y you obviously didn't get to move much, and I didn't. And she asked, how did that make me feel? And it made me feel... Um, so awful that as soon as my doctors would let me, I would go back to the club. And I remember after one surgery when I'm two blocks from the club and um, they said, I said, can I go work out at the club doing like non-weight bearing exercise? Uh, Schwinn Airdyne with my my uh, injured leg, my, my operated leg propped up. So to exercise three limbs. And did you know when you are in that kind of a situation and you work out your other three limbs and not your injured limb, that your injured limb benefits 40%. Hmm. gets 40% of the benefit of the cardio benefit and of the exercise that your three healthier Makes limbs sense. get. Yeah, because yeah. your blood, your circulation is still, it's getting there, even though you're exactly. not working it like the others, it's still, exactly. it's still getting the benefit. And so my doctors tell me they have to keep me on a short leash. So what I would do is just tell me yes or no. Can I go do cardio? Can I go to the club? Yes, if it's non-weight bearing. Yes, if it's, you know, the Schwinn Air Diner, the new step, which is a recumbent climber. And so I would take a taxi, and the guy, the taxi would pick me up. I'm on crutches, and I would say, look, don't kill me, but I just want to go two blocks down the street to East Bank Club. And it's obvious <laughs> that I couldn't walk. So my doctors figure if we tell her that she can't walk there, then she'll lay off cardio for a week or two weeks. It didn't work because I took a cab to the club. They just didn't want me walking down the street with the crutches, uh, like not even a week after surgery when things were too fresh because they didn't want to take right. the chance of, of um, tripping, tripping or, yeah. falling, mm -hmm. jarring something. But that just demonstrates to you th how driven, how passionate, how dedicated, and how disciplined I am when it comes to daily cardio because this is the first time in my life. I mean, I just showed you, I just showed you my picture again. Here it is when I was 317 pounds. Now you sit, you see me sitting before you and I'm down almost 150 pounds. So this is one of the crucial keys to true and everlasting weight loss is that movement. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Kathy. Sure. How do we become aware of the importance of movement and take the initiative to create flow and the ease that can help alleviate many causes of physical pain? Okay. Well, if you think about it, dancers, you know how they move so freely and easily and smooth? I'm a they dancer practice. and I don't move smooth yet, but it's well, bad. <laughs> you're getting there, right? I'm getting there, I'm getting there. But that it's practice. Yeah. And it's moving the fascia, it's moving the muscles, it's stretching them out and really getting them to move the way they should move. Mm -hmm. So sitting around gets you all stiff. So becoming aware of how you're feeling. For example, I had a client come in and said, How do I know if this cranial sacral business is gonna work? I had them journal how do you feel right now mm -hmm. write down how you feel in an hour mm -hmm. write down how you feel tomorrow sure and really become aware of your body and that way you can find out if it if it's helping you or if it's not helping you sure but it's amazing when you really focus on what's going on with your own body what you can come up with and realize how much pain you're in or how much stress you're under or you know I don't want to say negative things but it really brings your awareness to your body and then hopefully with that awareness you will make the steps to make the change to feeling better. Why don't you tell our audience um, 
our viewers what you do and tell them a little bit about uh, what exactly cranial sacral, cranial sacral? therapy is yeah. for those okay. people who aren't aware of what it is. Okay. Well, I am a cranial, cranial, uh, cranial sacral specialist, and I was certified through the Upledger Institute. John Upledger is the one who created the, the therapy. And basically what it is, it's a very light touch, five grams of pressure or less around your skull, the bones in your head, your spine, and your sacrum. And really it's the membranes and the tissues that surround your central nervous system because they get tight mm -hmm. and um, restricted. So what we do is we use five grams of pressure and we release those tensions in the tissue. And when those uh, tensions are released, then your, your bones and other organs can get back into alignment. So with that, when things are moving a little bit more freely and easily, then that gives you encouragement to move. Mm -hmm. Because it as sure you does. sit down, if you have an injury, that injury, you get scar tissue or it just gets all tensed, tensed mm -hmm. up because you're not moving it. So it really helps release those tensions in the tissues so that it will encourage you to actually move mm -hmm. for that wellness. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I know a few years ago you had a lower back injury. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was because you snub sh snubbled yeah. show. Yeah. Snub <laughs> Shovel Shovel snow. snow. I know that's pretty unusual <laughs> here in Chicago. Huh? And you went to the chiropractor and tell right. us the, what he said. Well, he said, you know, he said the most important thing you can do is move. The worst thing you can do is sit on the couch. And baby yourself. And baby yourself. Yeah. Because the more you do that, the tighter it's going to be. So I do a lot of Pilates. I'm a pretty avid Pilates student. <laughs> so he encouraged me to continue doing the Pilates, really strengthen that core so you can take the pressure off of your back and really strengthen mm -hmm. the core muscles to support your structure. Yeah, to support your structure mm -hmm. so that you're supported more evenly and, um, you know, it keeps it off your back. But I thought it was so interesting because what I wanted to do was sit there because it hurt to move. Oh, sure. I didn't want to move. But I knew if, if I did that, it would make it worse. And with my lifestyle, I just... That was not an option for me. So I got up, I moved, I went to the chiropractor, I took care of myself. I made that commitment to take sure. care of myself so that I could, you know, get back to the way I wanted to move. So so what do you do today mm -hmm. when the pain starts creeping in? Well, creeping he, back he, in. Keep it creeping back in. I do a lot of the Pilates. I still go to a chiropractor. I still take I care of too. myself. Yeah. I stretch. So I have a really good idea of how to you know, take care of myself. And then with some of the Pilates moves, I understand how to actually make a movement. So if I'm shoveling the driveway again, I know how to support my Do you have body. no neighbor kids? <laughs> no, no. Um, I can shovel. However, my husband did get a snowblower since then. So. <laughs> Good for him. So I don't have to shovel as much. But you just learn how to actually move so you don't injure yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I have... Um, serious back problems because mm -hmm. of my ski injury. I see a chiropractor in December. Twice a year I get the lumbar and cervical sh steroid shots in my back. And in December, I, I got them in June when I went to Alaska, and they lasted till December, and then they my back started to be, like, talking to me. Mm -hmm. So I knew it was time for the shots again. Mm -hmm. So I got them in December thinking, okay, I'm going to get them before the holidays. I'm going to be pain-free for the holidays. I'm going to be golden. And what happened was is the shots worked for one week, and then they oh, backfired, no. and it was hideous. So I've been seeing a chiropractor every week. Um, she is more holistic than most, and she takes eight patients a day. She charges $85 for a 60-minute visit, and she gives you soft tissue massage, oh, and she wow. does okay. all kinds of things in <clears throat> different ways to adjust. And so I have been doctoring with her. And interestingly, you said about journaling because she told me Friday, she said, look how far you have come since January. January, February, March, April, so four months. And... Um, you know, once I started thinking about that, mm -hmm. you start thinking, well, maybe I do feel good. Maybe I do feel better. And I feel better because mostly mm -hmm. because of her. But also, too, I follow up with the stretches right. I follow up with. I have a routine from her and from my physical therapist. Mm -hmm. I do some Pilates for core strength. So I do things every single day. Movement 
um, exercises to keep things going, moving, working right. so that I can get around, so that I can do my hour of cardio. Because I'll tell you something, I will never be fat again, ever. Let me ask you something. Are you familiar with a, um, a method or a modality called McKenzie? I've heard of it, and you and I talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm not extremely familiar with it, but from what you described, it's really just making your spine move opposite in the opposite in way in the opposite direction yeah. so it's a back back bending motion instead of the forward, forward bending motion which we do a lot of that kind of thing in pilates yeah so stretching out bringing your you know stretching your muscles out mm -hmm. here really helps then open up the spine in a different direction um Mackenzie has helped me a lot. So for those of you who mm -hmm. suffer with back pain, Google Mackenzie Therapy. Um, it's a woman's name. I can't remember her first name. They have books on Amazon. But if you really suffer from back pain, especially lower back pain, I would suggest that you get in, mm -hmm. investigate Mackenzie anyway. Um, also tell us, um, you're a Reiki master mm -hmm. trainer. I'm a level one Reiki. I never went any further. Um, I would love to study and get my second and third levels with you, but tell us exactly what Reiki is. Okay. Because it's not really a movement modality, but it is right. it, it it's also. It's an energy an modality. Energy. Exactly. Right. So, so tell it's our a, listeners. It's a, um, Reiki is a Japanese word for universal life force energy. That's the translation. So what a Reiki practitioner does is we become attuned to the Reiki energy and then we facilitate the energy from the universe to the uh, recipient. And what we do is we feel for the energy around your body and um, it, it feels kind of like, from my perspective, bumps. Mm -hmm. You know, bumps in the road, potholes or whatever. And really what I'm trying to do is just smooth that out and when you have that clear, smooth energy, you become relaxed, right? Yeah. And you so, do. what happens when you relax? Things work better. They work better because right. you let the tensions go. You don't you let keep the tensions yourself go. so right. And so that um, accounts for body movement. If you're on medications, being relaxed helps your body absorb those medications and work with those medications mm -hmm. a little bit better. It's excellent for stress relief. Reiki. Reiki. No kidding. Absolutely. Can you do Reiki on yourself? Absolutely. Can you really? You'll have to teach a lot me. Of times, You'll have to show me that. A lot of times I just do this when I fall asleep. Really? One hand on my heart, one hand on my belly, and I fall asleep. No kidding. Mm -hmm. You yeah. say becoming aware of your thought patterns regarding movement is also very important. Mm -hmm. Please explain. Well, if you think about it a little bit, when you're in pain, and like for my example was my back, I didn't want to move. When you were laid up, you didn't necessarily want to move. No, it was just so much more to easy yeah. to lay there and watch sit Anthony there or Bourdain. lay there. <laughs> but then your mind starts reminding you that you're in pain and that you're yeah. not feeling that good. And then you don't want to move and then you feel even worse and then you don't want to move. So it's a self-perpetuating thing. So if you just make that decision, you know what? I'm going to stand up today. I'm going to walk down the hall. I'm going to walk down the hall yeah. today. You know what? Today, I think I'm going to make it down to the front door. Exactly. You know what? Today, I might go out on the front porch. So it's really just changing your mind and not thinking about your losing situation. the 150 pounds. But what can I do right now to change my perspective? Mm -hmm. I can stand up today, even for a minute. And then you just progress from there. What are you going to do the next day? What are you going to do the next day? And then it clears your mind. Mm -hmm. Because movement, we talked about this earlier too, mm -hmm. movement helps creativity. It clears your mind. Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. So just being aware of that is, that's huge. I know lots of people who are not technically bedridden, but they are in bed a lot and they are depressed people. Very. They're not, you know, yeah. they're just not happy. So... Change that. Make a decision. Move and change that. What helps you, what helps motivate you to keep moving? What helps me stay motivated to keep moving? Yeah. Just because my big thing is nature. I love to take walks. I love to get in the kayak and, and paddle or row, whatever you do. We have kayak. our own kayak? We have our own wow, kayak. Wow, cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, spending time with friends. You know, going mm -hmm. for walks with friends. I love to mow the lawn. 
folks. That's one of the things I know. It's it's strange, but um, you know, getting out there and just getting in the yard, doing some gardening. I just like to move because, like you, I just get fidgety if I'm not moving. I can't deal with my it. mind goes blank. Mm-hmm. I my creativity slows down. So, just the fact that I'm an outdoors person and I can't stand to sit still for too long. People ask me sometimes what helps motivate me to keep moving, Mm -hmm. and I have to tell you that I tell tell everybody the same thing. When I look over my shoulder, I see my old fat self, Mm -hmm. the one that I showed you earlier in the show at 317 pounds. I see my old fat self chasing me down the street, and it's very difficult for me to know that this is what keeps me from looking like that again. This is what keeps me from being 317 pounds again is my lifestyle eating plan, my low carb lifestyle eating plan, keeping my grams of carbohydrates 35 and under a day Mm -hmm. when I want to lose weight. What helps me um, uh, motivate me is again, my old fat self chasing me down the street, one hour of cardio minimum a day, um, you know, and a good effective diet, you know, something, um, can you give us quickly a little two minute takeaway for our listeners? Can you sum Mm -hmm. up your whole, your whole philosophy and movement and everything, um, for our, uh, excuse me, our viewers? Oh, sure. Um, it really doesn't take a membership, uh, in a gym to really get motivated to move. Just make the decision to move. If it hurts, if there's a lot of pain associated with moving, find help. Get a personal trainer, get a physical therapist, a chiropractor, a cranial sacral therapist like myself, a Reiki practitioner, yep. somebody to help change the energy, change the mindset, and really focus on you and decide and make the decision. That's the biggest thing. You just need to move. Get up, walk to the front door. Stretching is huge. Getting things done. Yeah. So I would say whatever you need to do, just move. Move towards that painless life. Um, Kathy Regani, thank you so, so much for welcome. being a wonderful guest today. Um, and let me see. This is my contact information. If you want to get even more of my motivational weight loss tools, I invite you to go to my website at commit-fit.com so you can find the secret to your own true and everlasting weight loss once and for all. And then hire me as your motivator and coach because I really want to see you succeed just like I did. Nine years. First time in my life, I got a grip on my weight, on my obesity issue. Because if I can do it, you can do it too. So please go to my website, sign up for my motivational newsletter, and get a free download of my healthy eating tips, which I have been told by many, many, many experts in the medical and fitness field that my my, uh, healthy eating tips are not the run of the mill, not the same old, same old. I guarantee you, you will you will love them. And they're written in my writing style and they are just different. Um, again, thank you for joining us this You're evening so on welcome. Commit to Get Fit with Laura Dion Jones. I, we, we will see you tomorrow evening on my Block Talk radio show, available listen live archi- uh, or archived right from my website at commit-fit.com. And we are... Um, going to have a rerun I think um, teach your kids to swim this summer with Tony LeBan and then we might do a two-hour show tomorrow and have Noah Richter back on who is the um, excellent uh, personal trainer from East Bank Club and um, he was a previous guest and but we're going to do a rerun because I won't be there tomorrow night live so you can listen to two recorded shows back to back so please join us next week on our commit to get fit TV and radio show because our guest is Kent Anderson And he is a doctor of naturopathic medicine. And his tagline is Live Well, ND, and Back to the Future of Health. And Kathy will be joining us with him on our Blog Talk radio show next week. So if you have any questions for her, please, please, please tune in um, next week on our Blog Talk radio show on Tuesday night, 7 p.m. And please join us for another interesting show right here next Monday night at 7 o'clock. And thank you for watching. Please tell all your friends. And I would like to thank you all for the happy. Thank you all for watching. And I want to say Semper Fi, kids, and pray for peace. With one more word, amen. (laughs) Thank you very much for tuning in to Commit to Get Fit with Laura Dion Jones on Chicago Cable Access Network, CAN-TV. And please join us next Monday night at 7 o'clock. We look forward to 
visiting with you again. Thank you.